What a day for the stock market, guys. What a day. We had the S&P 500 close up about 1.5% today. The Dow went up 1.3%. We had the NASDAQ 100 up the most by far, up 2.7% on the close as the Russell went up 1.4% and the VIX went down over 8%. So in this video, you guys know the deal. We're going to break down the stock market charts, what I'm looking at. And we have a lot of individual stocks to break down. Earnings from eBay, Mercado Libre. You guys know I can't pronounce that company correctly, but we're going to break them down in this video as well as Lucid Motors and a couple of other ones. So sit back, relax, take a sip of whatever the heck you guys are drinking. I got some water here. Make sure to get your 10 stocks from Moomoo with a $100 deposit and your 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. All those free stocks are linked down below. And let's dive into the video. So like I said, very strong day across the board for the markets today with volatility coming down. And we noticed here that at the end of the day, SPY ended up closing above 413 and $414 a share. And it did pull back a little bit heading into the close. Nothing crazy, but it went from four, um, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, 415.68 to about, what was it, 414.45. So it did pull back about 0.3% heading into close. But again, not that big of a deal. The bulls for sure, in, in my eyes at least, are still in charge, even though it pulled back a little bit. So the fact that 413, 414, we closed above it, that's a good sign. Now in the short term, like I've been saying, I could see SPY going towards potentially 418 or 420. And if that were to break, the next level is 430 bucks, like we've talked about many times here recently on the channel. And I mean, you know, these targets have been hitting one after the other because the bulls have been in charge. So let's see if that continues. And when it comes to triple Q, let's pull that up and see what's going on. This completely broke out of 315 today. 315, that was a sticking point like we've mentioned from the end of May, early June. We broke right through that. This went up eight and a half bucks today, 2.7%, like I said. And we closed right under 323 bucks a share. You guys can see that right here. We did pull back a little bit into the close like SPY, but not much at all. It's not a big deal, to be honest. It pulled back about a quarter of a percent nothing much. And it is down a little bit here after the bell by the looks of it. Let's take a look here. Let's see. It's down about another 0.2% after the bell. But again, considering it went up 2.7% on the day, this is really meaningless. And as long as it's holding above 315, the bulls are going to be in charge in the short term, which we're well above 315. So watch out for a move potentially to 330 bucks here. That's the next gap that I'm seeing next level of resistance from the beginning of May. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and let's shift over here to Webull now and see what's going on when it comes to the crypto side of things. And you guys know, you guys know this very clearly that I'm not a crypto channel, but I do like covering Bitcoin, Ethereum, taking a look at these charts because a lot of you guys and it's all about you, really, the YouTube channel. You know, I like talking about stuff I like talking about, but if the viewer doesn't like it or if the if viewer wants something uh, for me to cover, I'm going to, of course, pay attention to it because I'm making content for you guys. And I know a lot of you guys um, like crypto and you want me to cover this every single day. So let's take a look here. Bitcoin is right now at 23,300, which I feel like each time I've covered it these past couple of days, it's been at that point, 23,000, 23,300, 23,500. <clears throat> so pretty much guys, in other words, we've been around where we are now for a good three, four days at this point. And we're really waiting for the next move. Is Bitcoin going to try and break out of this resistance that I've drawn out? 15, uh, not, not 15,000, 25,000, 25,3. Is it going to try and break out of there? Or is it going to fail at this point and maybe start shooting for, you know, 20,500? That was the low point from the 26th of July, maybe even under that. You know, at this point, we're really just consolidating or, or really... It's, it's waiting to pick direction. That's at least what I'm seeing here. And we are at, again, a big level of resistance. And last I checked, Ethereum is as well. If I draw this trend line, you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about. Look at this. Ethereum hit right around 17, 1750, which was support all throughout May 
into June, early days of June at least, and then we obviously tanked to about 880. Now we're back to 1700, <clears throat> 1750, and we've been getting selling pressure these past, um, you know, a couple of days, really the past almost two weeks at this point, uh, maybe even over two weeks, a little over two weeks. So Ethereum, is, it's got to break. If, if you want, if you're on the bull side and you want to see this rally continue, you got to see 1750 and especially 1800. You got to see that point break. So with that being said, guys, that is a quick update on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Make sure you guys get your 12 free stocks from Webull. Link down below those. I know it's crazy, but those could be valued up to 30000 bucks. So go down below, check out the details, deposit any amount of money, and you can get those free stocks. So with that being said, let's dive into some earnings. Let's talk about some earnings. And I, I just realized, guys, when I was prepping this video, I completely forgot yesterday to talk about Robinhood. Robinhood reported earnings, and we got news that they are laying off 23% of their workhorse and the CEO, which the CEO has gotten as much flack as pretty much any CEO out there. I mean, he's been ridiculed and rightfully so. We're not going to dive into that in this video. You guys know what I'm talking about. And he ended up admitting this is on me, the CEO. And, you know, they're laying off a lot of people, 23%. Guys, that's a lot. I mean, that's a quarter of the workforce gone. Boom. Just like that. They reported EPS of negative 34 cents versus negative 37 cents estimated. So they ended up beating on EPS. And actually, no, I was going to say they beat on revenue too. They did not beat on revenue, guys. 318 million versus 323.28 million estimated. So they missed uh, on revenue, beat on EPS. And get this, guys, this is insane. Scary stat. Revenue is down 44% from a year ago. Let me say that again. Robin Hood's revenue from a year ago is down 44% which is crazy. Q2 monthly active users were 14 million, down about 1.9 million from a year ago. So as revenues down 44% from a year ago, monthly active users, they're not down 44%. In fact, they're probably down, I don't know the math on that, 15% or something like that, 20%. So that is an interesting um, sign there, revenue, you know, uh, uh, decline is heavily outpacing, um, monthly active users decline and assets under custody were 64.2 million down 31% sequentially. So these numbers year over year are just flat out abysmal for Robin hood. And I've said this, I mean, have I not said this since day one? I told you guys go back through the videos. I know there's a lot of videos, but go look at my Robin Hood videos from a year ago at this point. Yeah, that's funny. It, it IPO'd about a year ago. This is weird. Um, it ran up to 85 bucks on August 2nd of 2021. Do you guys remember that? I was covering it the entire time. I told you, if I remember correctly, before that run up, I said I wouldn't be surprised if we got a run up. We got the run up due to the whole Wall Street bets hype, the hype of the IPO. And I was telling you the whole time, I'm personally not buying it. I would never buy Robinhood. I think it's overvalued. And now look at where it is a year later. Not that much uh, not, not that much after an IPO. It's not like it's five years later and the company um, you know, went bust. I mean, this happened in a year, guys. This is insane. From $85, it just hit six under rather under seven dollars a share. So this is at an interesting spot. You know, is it gonna survive? The recession that we're in, it might. I, I feel like Robin Hood won't go under personally. I feel like they'd get bought out before they go under. Uh, but who knows? Either way, I'm not touching it. You know, year over year, again, the numbers are awful. And I don't see this getting any better, to be honest. I don't see it getting any better. Um, you know, a lot of, of what helped Robin Hood was the stimulus money, the, the lockdowns. People were locked in at home with all this free money coming in. They had nothing to do. You know, people were working. Uh, people were working from home, and they were trading while they were working from home. And people are still doing that, but not as much as they were. Clearly, based on the numbers, so it's rough. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts about Robinhood. I'd really love to know. Let me know in the comments. And another one that we got to look at 
is Mercado Libre, which is a company, if I remember correctly, are they in Argentina? I'm pretty positive they're Argentina. I got to look this up now because I haven't talked about them in about a month. Uh, maybe not more than a month. Let's see here. Mercado, and I'm looking this up on Google, by the way, which is my biggest investment. Is it in Argentina? Yeah, it is. I knew I knew that, guys. I was just double-checking. Yeah, Buenos Aires is where their uh, headquarters is in Argentina. There we go. So they went up 6.3% on the day. Look at this. This is nuts. They closed at 890, and they're currently over 1,000 freaking bucks a share after the bell, meaning they're up 13 and a half. Percent. Mercado Libre did 243 EPS, crushing the $1.96 estimate, and they beat revenue as well, 2.6 versus 2.5 billion estimated. And that makes complete sense. I mean, I'm not surprised uh, because if you guys took a look at Amazon, well, they ended up crushing earnings and running up about a couple of days ago, about a week ago, whenever that was. And if you didn't know, Mercado Libre is kind of like an Amazon in Argentina and South America, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's crushing it. It's breaking out. We have a golden cross. It's not fully out of the woods yet, guys, so don't get too excited. But the fact that we're finally getting that uh, little little breakout, the first one we've seen in months, I mean, that, that's a good sign. Now, we got to end up breaking out. For this to continue, we got to end up breaking out of this downward channel. I'm drawing it right now so you guys can take a look and I'll use this for future reference. We can see here we're in a downwards channel very clearly. We have big resistance coming up on Mercado. 1,000, 1,050, 1,100, 1,200. If we could start getting out of there, all right, bulls could, uh, could continue up. But in the meantime, I'm going to be very cautious. If you're in this, kudos to you. But be careful. Be careful. Locking in profits. I'm not telling you what to do, but no one ever went broke locking in a little profit. So, Mercado Libre, watch out for it. eBay's another one. eBay ended up doing well after the bell today because of earnings and during the day today as well, went up 2. Point, or uh, rather 4.2%. And you can see here after the bell, they closed at 50 bucks, ran up to 55 bucks, and now it's at roughly $51. So, it shot up about 10%. Now it's up only about half a percent to about 0.7% after the bell. And eBay did very well. EPS came in at 99 cents versus 89 cents estimated and revenue 2.4 bill versus 2.37 billion estimated. So that's a double beat for eBay and their guidance is great in my opinion. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on what you think is great, but I think this is good, especially in today's environment. Full year 22 EPS they're looking at $3.95 to $4.10. The estimate was $3.98, so that is above the estimate, which is great. Revenue, 9.6, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, billion versus, or rather, it was 9.6 to 9.9 .9 billion for full year 22, their estimate, versus the 9.68 billion from the analysts, which their revenue guidance is higher than the analysts. So I think that was a good report. Double beat, beat on revenue guidance and EPS guidance, and the stock is pretty much at break even or not at break even but it's not moving much here after the uh after the bell like I like I think it should it should be so this is one that we're going to be watching and honestly if it pulls back, that could open up a good opportunity for a dip buy overall on a stock that's reversing. You guys can see eBay, it's breaking out for the first time since the beginning, middle of April. It's now above the moving averages. We have a golden cross, so let's watch it. I think this could continue the rally. We have an energy company, MRO, which is Marathon Oil. They reported, and their stock is pretty much unchanged here after the bell. They ended up doing EPS of $1.37 on revenue of 2.3 billion dollars and I'm not sure what the uh the year over year oh it looks like here they did beat on both of those numbers which is good but I'm not sure what their numbers were a year ago so I can't tell you that but we know that a lot of these energy companies like Exxon, Chevron, Occidental Petroleum a lot of them ended up doing great great numbers wait did Oxy report I'm pretty sure they did let me double check uh yeah they did I mean, their year-over-year -year growth is is exceptional. I'm sure MRO 
is looking pretty good as well. So we're noticing an inverse head and shoulders, or at least I'm noticing. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, we can see here left shoulder right there. Boom. We got the head right there. And then we have the right shoulder right here. And we're slightly above both, or rather under both moving averages, which isn't a good sign. But if this could end up getting back over, I'd say... 25 20 well i'm gonna put it at 25 put my alert right there if this breaks back over 25 there could be a big push coming uh right shoulder could be completing 30 <clears throat> 32 bucks that's where this could be going so mro you guys got to watch it lucid motors they ended up or lucid group whatever the heck it's called they ended up reporting earnings guys and my voice is going out hold on let me get some water <clears throat> Lucid ended up reporting earnings and the stock went up 4.2% on the day, but they reported after the bell and they're down $2, over $2 <clears throat> after the bell here, excuse me guys, and that, that equates to a 12% drop and it makes sense because they missed revenue by a freaking mile not by a million five million ten million they missed revenue by about 50 million dollars guys their revenue came in at 97.3 million bucks versus the 145.49 million estimated so that that's just abysmal when you see that you're like ah ouch that's bad. And you can clearly see the stock is down 12%. And they ended up doing EPS of negative 33 cents versus the negative 36 cents, which beat, but who gives a crap if revenue is abysmal? And I'm sure their guidance is not good. Um, we'll take a look here. Let's see if we even have any guidance. Uh, report strong demand while lowering production guidance for the year. That doesn't sound right. Um, but anyway, you know, Lucid is not a company that I've done much research. In fact, I haven't done any research on it since it initially came out, which if you remember, guys, if you were around in 2020, which I, I don't know how many of you guys are left. I'm assuming some because I do get, uh, you know, some viewers here on the channel. Uh, if you were around back in 2020, 2020, 2021, you remember this was a SPAC. It ran up a bunch, down a bunch. It was volatile. And uh, now clearly it's more towards the bottom of the uh, of the range that it's been in over the past couple of uh, years, two years. So what do you think about Lucid, guys? Do you own it? Honestly, I wonder if any of you watching this video, I'm sure some of you uh, own it, but do you believe in Lucid? Do you seriously have a diehard conviction that Lucid is going to be a company like Tesla one day, honestly, and, and I don't even know, you know, I want to know truthfully your opinions, uh, because I might have to look deeper into it because again, I haven't done so in about a year and a half at this point, maybe even longer than that. So yeah. Do you believe in lucid? Are you a diehard lucid fan? Let me know in the comments. And the last one that I want to break down before I wrap this video up, guys, we're about 17 minutes in. And by the way, if you're still here, smash that like button, make sure to subscribe. And don't forget, if you haven't done so already, to get your 10 free stocks for Moomoo. Each of those could be valued up to 100 bucks. And you could get, or not 100 bucks, they could be valued up to 2,500 bucks. I'm screwing up the promo, guys. And all you got to do is deposit at least 100 bucks. Yeah. You guys know what I mean. So last one is Fortinet, which is ticker symbol FTNT. Let's pull that up and see what's going on. They did EPS of $0.24 cents versus $0.22 cents estimated revenue of $1.03 billion uh, versus the uh, actually $1.03. So that was in line. So they beat EPS in line on revenue. They see Q3 revenue of 1.10 to 1.13 bill versus 1.12. That's in line, pretty much in line with the estimate. And they see adjusted EPS of 26 to 28 cents versus 27 cents estimated. So not too bad based on um, just reading that. And like Lou said, I haven't done much research into this one in a while. Uh, so I'm not too sure why it could be going down. I mean, if people are more versed with a company, what they're going through, the earnings, this, that, they would have a better understanding of why it could be dropping. But in this case, it's dropping. And maybe I'm missing something. Uh, it's down about 9%. But that's after reporting, I'd argue, decent earnings with reaffirmed guidance. I mean, I don't know why it's fallen, but again, guys, like I say all the time in these videos, the stock market works in mysterious ways. And at this point we are moving towards, it looks like at least we want to go for the bottom of that channel, which in this case is anywhere from 
uh, you know, 50, 55. So I'd be careful with Fortinet, you know, FTNT. I'd give it a little bit of time for the dust to settle, and I wouldn't be surprised if we had more work to do on the downside. You know, if this were to get down um, towards, again, 50, maybe even on, not maybe not under 50, but 50 to 53, 55, you know, that's where it could be going. And mind you, it's at 57 here after the bell, and it closed at 62. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts. I'm going to wrap the video up here. Hit that like button, subscribe, make sure to join my Patreon. And again, do not forget to get all those free stocks, 12 stocks from Weeble and your 10 stocks from Moomoo. Moo. They're linked down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there. Peace out.